couple of weeks ago, I gave this uh, series to Jamie. Last week, we went over Deathlock issue number one. And now we review Deathlock, the souls of cyberfolk, which is, is Deathlock issues two to five. Yeah. You boys take it away. Yep, that is exactly right. So with Deathlock number five, the the credits for that book, or for the whole storyline, as a matter of fact, uh, right, written by uh, Dwayne McDuffie, inks are by uh, Mike Manley, pencils are Dennis uh, Cohen, colors Gregory Wright, and letters are Ken Lopez. Um, before I got into this, I read the first issue, so that way I could refresh myself. First issue is kind of like a standalone. It's the after events of that four issue miniseries that Jamie and I were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, you guys went into a lengthy discussion about that uh, in last week's episode. So with this, uh, the uh, the storyline here is uh, it starts off with Forge and Misty Knight. Uh, kind of in the middle of this heated battle with some cybertronic machine or robot or whatever. And it ends up capturing Forge and takes him away. Misty in turn reaches out to what do they call them? The cyber netters or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Something like that. And gets in touch with Deathlock and uh, brings him in to help her uh, rescue Forge. But it turns out that uh other things are going on and other cybernetters have been captured instead being machine man and Ultron bot uh, bushwhacker. um, And what I could have sworn was platinum from the metal men. Uh, And uh, the the whole storyline goes on that route. And then eventually the fantastic four and some members of the X-Men come into this and and even vision from the Avengers uh, comes along too, because while I was reading this story, I was wondering like with all these cybernetic people or cyborgs or anything like that, where the heck is vision? Well, he shows up for all of, I think three panels in the last issue. So, (laughs) which he should. Right. (laughs) Yeah. But uh, I really dug this. I really enjoyed this story. Uh, It is, it is nineties comic book so it is very dialogue heavy but uh it's it's really good it's a really fun read it's a it's got a lot of action and it's got this underlying message in the story too that mcduffie put in there and it's talking about like how people feel about themselves in their own skin and uh that ultimately that's something that you shouldn't concern yourself with because people are people and everybody goes through different events, but we all go through it together, which I thought was really, really cool. Uh, So yeah, uh, to, to kind of put a button on that, I think as a, as a rating with the entire storyline, like the artwork by uh, uh, Dennis Cohen, not my favorite, but uh, it, with the way that the series is, I think it fits perfectly. It's like Klaus Jansen artwork, which I dislike at a, uh, a lot. But Dennis Cohen's artwork, I think, is a little more refined than that. So I dug that more so than, than I wanted to. And, and it ended up growing on me. And now it's what I expect is the standard for the series itself. So as far as a rating goes with this on a scale of one to 10, I think that I would give this a very solid 7.5. McDuffie's work uh, for for the script is wonderful. Uh, He really fleshes out Deathlock as a character. Uh, Misty Knight was a wonderful character and a great addition to the story. Uh, the X-Men, Mr. Fantastic Wolverine, all that stuff. I think he did those guys really well too. Uh, Dennis Cohen's artwork uh, grew on me throughout the course of reading it. And now, like I said before, I said it is the standard. So I think I give it a solid 7.5. Sonny, what did you think about it? Oh, actually, I was going to let Jamie can. Oh, okay. Yeah, Yeah. go ahead. Yeah, I'll Um, I'll take this one because Sonny's the one who gave us the book. So we might as well review it. Um, Tim, you hit everything pretty much on the head. So what I'm going to probably go over right now in my mind is what I liked and didn't like. Um, I do. Well, I don't really agree with you on the artwork. Mm-hmm. I think for the 90s, this was where it should be um, in, in the kind of like the pinnacle, because a he doesn't have pockets on every single part of his body. Yeah. So he took that stigma right out. Um as far as like the detail, like there's a lot of detail in a lot of this because of all the cybernetic work and everything. Oh, dude, it, it, it just it looked 
perfect for its time, which mm-hmm. is hard to do. Um, a lot of people try to go above and beyond. A lot of people try to go like early Kirby. A lot of people try to like, even now there's people that try so hard to be more futuristic, but people still bring that, you know, like Dicko esque into their work where this was its own. And I give that a hundred percent like love for that. Um, the story again, so many narration boxes. They scare me at night. I have nightmares. It's great. So many, so much yellow. I got a problem. I'm going to have to blink out for the decoding panels episodes. <laughs> yeah. I might as well just have yellow as my template for now on. Um, story along. I thought that they really tried with this character. And what I mean, they really tried with this character is they put in every big hitter from yeah. Marvel that you could think of oh, yeah. for them to be in the book just to make him relevant. And I'm not saying he wasn't relevant prior. I'm saying for him to have his own series to mm-hmm. make people want to buy the book, they put in big, big names. And that, that was cool. I thought that was like, you don't see that anymore. You don't see people throwing names into a single issue just for people to be like, why is Wolverine in this? Mm-hmm. Why is Forge in this? Why is Misty Knight in like, you know, to bring more? Why is Vision in three panels? You know, it, it, right. It, my point. So I usually give, I grade every issue. Overall, though, for my grading of this, Tim, we're almost in the same ballpark. I think, what, okay. what, what did I give uh, the first issue? I get that a 7 4. I think so. Some, somewhere in there. Yeah. Overall, I give this a 7 9. Seven, right nine. on. I, I thought it was good. I thought it was, I thought it, I, the art is what saved me for this. Um, I like the story, I like, especially the first issue, kind of tying everything in. You know, it was a standalone, but it kind of made you feel like, okay, you know, you talk about his family, everything else. Then you go into this and trying to, you know, be a different entity than he was prior. In a sense, it just felt more, it felt more controlled. Like you had more to go on. So Mm -hmm. I really did like those concepts. I really did like what they did, what they were going moving forward with. I did love the art again. There's not too many pockets. Like I see only one on Tim's screen. Uh, yeah. he's got I think that's belt. the yeah. pocket that holds the gun. gun. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. He's got a Batman utility belt. I know they always steal off DC. So, yep. There um, you go. So, yeah, seven nine hundred percent. I, I did enjoy it. I, I want to keep enjoying what we're reading here. Just can we not do all the narration boxes for Jamie's <laughs> carpal tunnel? He's gonna have in his wrist by the time he's done editing all these for decoding panels. Okay. So now on to me. Yeah, I picked this one up for you guys. Uh, I like, or, you know, Jamie picked it out. And then, Tim, we wanted to have you on because we know you're a big Deathlock fan as well. Mm-hmm. And this is a character I've liked and always found to be very underrated. So, okay, let me find a good story. So, Souls of Cyberfolk, you guys went over it. Uh, for me, this is one that I really like a lot. Uh, Jamie, how you mentioned, like, how it has the, the big hitters, you know, like Sid Wolverine, the Fantastic Four. They even had uh, a Dr. Doom on the cover, which turned out to be a Doom bot. And I'm like, ah. Uh, no. They got it's still us a Doom. one. But still, yeah, it was still a, a cool cover. And even to, like I said, X-Men was so popular, they still make sure to make it on the cover. You know, Forge appears, yeah. you know, even for a few panels. But I really like the story. And then, Tim, how you were even mentioning like some of the things it dealt with. Like, I don't want to get too much away, but like this is Deathlock, and they're talking about how feelings and maybe mm-hmm. they feel so different. Like, But, if, you know, everybody, a lot of people go through feelings of feeling different and do you belong? And what are you going to leave behind for the world when your time comes? I really liked it. And then two, I think maybe issue three was like my, my least favorite because it was so much. One thing is there was so much narration, like you did say, Jamie, with the computer mm-hmm. constantly talking. Yeah. Uh, That's but, one of my favorite parts of the book was the computer's dialogue. I love that. And this is why we don't take your criticism. <laughs> but I did love the, um, the artwork. I felt it was very 90s. And, you know, I love the 90s stuff. So that was, it was great for me. I really enjoyed it. And I think the last issue was, it was definitely the most powerful and even a surprising ending to me. I think just everything about that last issue was really surprising. It's the way I want a story arc to end. It was big. It has me thinking about it even after I'm done reading. You know, it had a, a powerful message. And for me, I'm like, okay, I definitely want to read more Deathlock. And that's why I'm like, this is one I definitely want to review on the show. So with me, I enjoyed it. I think I enjoyed it even more than you guys when I gave it a 9.2. Ooh. 
I thought there was gonna be a ten. I was that's like, a as soon big as you jump. said that, I was like, oh, he's giving us a ten, isn't he? But that was if if there wasn't so much computer, it probably would have been. Thank but, you. But still a nine point two for me. Doesn't it knock off so much of your rating when, like, I get it. I love the content inside. You're paying money to get the content inside, but when it's like four boxes that are like that big per panel. It's nice and then you and then yeah. like the character's trying to squeeze through to be like, yeah. no, I'm here. Like the word dialogue takes up three quarters of the page, and then you've got this much of artwork. Yeah, yeah I, I don't like that either. But uh but this, I mean, this, this did, did good. I mean, other than what was it issue three where they were talking about like the computer and everything? It, like yeah, yeah Mecha Dooms word yeah. vomit. Yeah, the, the yeah. speaking spell. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. Well, that's cool, man. So 7.5 for me, Jamie, you do a 7.9 and Sonny shoots for the moon and does a 9.2. That's awesome. 